Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video in the Fanic Focus series. In the series so far, we've covered getting basic information such as the mode and status from the controller, as well as reading and setting the main program. If you're getting information from the Fanic controller, I imagine a lot of people want to know how to read the active alarms on the machine. So we'll cover that in this video. Let's get to it. <laughs> Before we get started, there are a couple things I wanted to put out. First, I have started a Discord server for anybody who needs help, wants to help others, or just wants to hang out in a community of like-minded people. Secondly, I put up some polls on the community tab for this channel. I'm planning out future videos, and I would love to know what type of content you guys want to see. So be sure to go vote in the polls. Your opinion matters, and it will help me put out more relevant videos. With all that out of the way, let's get to it. For real this time. Faults and alarms are a normal part of running any CNC. The G code isn't correct, a component breaks, an E stop was pressed, or any number of other unforeseen events can and do occur. To help us figure out what went wrong, we need alarm messages that accurately describe the problem so that we can fix it and continue making parts. Whether you want to display the alarm on a computer in the manager's office, or you want to record the alarm to a database for future reference, reading alarms can be useful and sometimes necessary. So today, we're going to take a look at how to read the active alarm messages from the FANIC controller and display them in a simple console window. To read alarm messages, we are going to use the CNC underscore read alarm message to function. This function is pretty easy to use and understand. It takes four arguments. As always, the first argument is going to be the focused handle. The next argument is going to be the type of alarm you want to read. There are many different types of alarms that can be monitored. In our case, we are going to want to monitor all the alarms, and you'll notice there's a selection for that. The third argument is the number of alarm messages that we are going to want to read. And the last is an instance of the ODB alarm message to structure where the active alarms will be stored. Let's take a deeper look at the ODB alarm message to structure. The first two fields in this structure are the alarm number and the FANUC alarm type. Each alarm in the FANUC controller will be marked by a unique type and number. For instance, an alarm having to do with overtravels will be marked by the type OT, while a servo alarm will be marked by the type of SV. You may encounter multiple alarms under each category, which will be marked by a number. For instance, an overtravel in the X negative direction may have a number of 500, while an X axis overtravel in the positive direction may be 501, resulting in OT500 and OT501 respectively. The next field is the number associated with the axis that the alarm is associated with. If the alarm is not associated with a particular axis, this field will contain zero. The next two fields are the message length and the alarm message text. The length will contain the size of the alarm message. The alarm message text can be up to 64 characters in length and will be stored in the ALM MSG field. Note that the characters in this field can be in a number of different languages depending on the language the controller is set to. Before continuing on, if you haven't been following along in this series, be sure to check out all the previous videos. By now you should have your programming environment set up to communicate with the Focus Library, and you should have the code to connect to the FANUC controller and get a Focus handle. If you don't, be sure to check out the first couple of videos in this series where the topics are covered. With that said, let's get to some code. For this demo, I have created a FANUC class that stores the connection method and an alarm messages class that will store the methods we use to obtain the alarms. The alarm messages class will be accessed through the FANUC class. I will first create three functions, the primary function that will make our focus call and two helper methods that will make formatting the alarm messages easier. The first function is going to be getActiveAlarms. This will return a list of strings that will hold all of our alarms. Next, we will create the alarms to list function, and it will return a list of type ODB alarm message underscore data, and it will take a single argument of the ODB alarm message to structure. The purpose of this function is to take the alarms that are returned from focus and convert them to a list that we can iterate. 
You will see why this is necessary once we start building out our functions. The last function we are going to create is one called get alarm text. This is going to take all the parts of the alarm and return a single string that we can display to the end user. We also need to create a dictionary. I'm going to call mine underscore alarm type. It is simply going to map between the two letter FANUC alarm type and the numbers that represent each type. If you have been following along in the videos, this will be similar to what we did with the mode and status. You can pause the video and copy my dictionary, or you can find the alarm types and their associated numbers on the eventcom page for the CNC read alarm message to function. Let's start with the get active alarms function. The first thing we need to do is create a new list of strings. Because I'm spontaneous and unique, I will call mine alarms. I will then create a short and call it number of alarms and initialize it to 10. This will represent the number of alarm messages we want to get from the controller. The last variable we are going to create is an instance of the ODB alarm message to structure. This is going to hold the alarm messages that the FANUC returns to us. After we have created our variables, we will check our focus handle to make sure that it is anything other than zero. If it is zero, we will return an empty list. We can now call the CNC read alarm message to function. The first argument is the focus handle. Next is the number that represents the axis we are trying to read the alarms from. I am going to put a negative 1 here because we want to read from all the axes. For the third argument, we are going to feed in the number of alarms variable, but we are going to use the ref keyword for this one. The reason we are doing this is because focus is going to tell us how many alarms it has actually been able to read by setting this variable. In other words, we tell focus how many alarms we want to read, and it tells us how many alarms it was actually able to read. The last argument is our ODB alarm message to structure. We assign the output of our function to underscore ret so that we can check it and make sure that it completed successfully. After making our function call, we need to check the return code to see if it's equal to ew underscore ok. If it isn't, we are just going to print a return code to the console and then return our empty list of strings. Before we move on to the next part, I want to discuss the ODB alarm message structure. For some reason, FANUC decided that it would be a terrific idea to send back the alarms as individual fields within the structure, instead of using an array. Looking at the structure, we can see that each alarm is a separate variable. Message 1, message 2, message 3, etc. This presents a problem if we want to iterate the alarms in a loop. Since we do want to iterate over the alarms, we are going to use the alarms to list function. Let's jump down to that function for a second and fill that in. This function is going to be super simple. All we are going to do is return a new list of type ODB alarm message to underscore data and set each index to each of the alarms and that's it. Back in our get active alarms function, we're going to call our alarms to list function and feed it the ODB alarm message to structure and assign the output to a variable. I will assign mine to a variable called raw alarms. Again, this is just going to return the alarms in a list so we can loop over them. We will now create a loop that iterates each of the alarm messages in the list. For each alarm, we will call get alarm text and send it the alarm information. This is going to format the alarm string into something that makes sense to a human. I will assign it to a string variable called formatted alarm. Now we can add the formatted alarm string to our alarms list that we created at the top of this function. Once all the alarms have been added, we will return the list. Now let's go down and complete the get alarm text function. The first thing I'm going to do is check to see if the struct is null. If it is, I'm going to return a string telling the user that there are no alarms. Next, I will check the type and alarm number. If they are zero, I will return the same no alarm text. Otherwise, I'm going to format the string and return the formatted alarm string. Let's break this down real quick. If you remember from the eventcom page, focus returns the alarm type as a number. That number isn't going to make sense to the end user. So we need to convert that number into text that tells the user what type of alarm has occurred. In the string that we are returning, the first thing we are going to do is send the alarm type number to the alarm type dictionary that we've created. This will convert that number into the text we need. Immediately after the alarm type, we will put the alarm number, followed by a colon, and then the alarm message. The alarm message is null terminated. However, focus returns 64 characters no matter how long the actual alarm message is. 
What ends up happening is that you will get the alarm message followed by a null character and then a bunch of gibberish. To prevent a bunch of gibberish being displayed to the end user, we are going to get a substring of the alarm message field. The alarm message structure provides the number of characters of the actual alarm message in the message length field. We will read a substring from the first character to whatever the message length is. Now that we're finished with this part, now we need to actually display the alarms to the user. As usual, in the main function, we have the code to connect to the controller and get a focus handle. If you don't have this code, you should go back to the beginning of this series. The first few videos in the series are vital to being able to communicate over focus. They walk you through setting up your development environment and making your first connection to the controller. Once we are connected and we have a handle, I will create a while loop. Inside the while loop, I am going to do a console.writeline and have it output the word alarms and a couple of new line characters. Next, I put a for each loop and iterate over the alarms that are returned from the get active alarms function. Inside the for each loop will be a console.writeline that outputs the alarm. We will do a thread.sleep and sleep for one second. You can set this to whatever you want, I just find that one second is a good rate for me. The last line of code we need to write is console.clear. I am adding this so that it just keeps writing over itself and there isn't a huge wall of confusing text. All right, well, if you've been following along to this point, congratulations. You've successfully listened to me drone on for an ungodly amount of time, and you deserve a cookie. But you aren't getting one, so you'll have to settle for running the application. Let's first run our applications with no active alarm messages. If everything went well, you should see a list of 10 strings that say no alarm. I will now trigger an alarm by turning on the parameter write enable. You can just hit e stop on your machine if that's easier for you. As you can see, the first alarm message changed to display the alarm type, the alarm number, followed by the text of the alarm message. And that is it for this video, folks. If you're still watching, thank you. Seriously, I really appreciate everyone who watches my videos. You are the reason I continue to do these videos, and it's tremendously satisfying when I get to hear from one of you. If you like this video, let me know in the comments and hit the like button. Thank you again for taking the time to watch. Until next time.